This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning, everybody. Am I audible? Hello, good morning. Good morning, Somebody sir. So, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Thank you. So, today we will continue. Uh, the firearm chapter so yesterday we have seen a few definitions about the firearm you know firearm is a thermodynamic machine which is where the potential energy of the gunpowder is transformed into the kinetic energy of the projectile so firearm by definition is a thermodynamic machine where the potential energy of the gunpowder is transformed are transferred into the kinetic energy of the projectile and we have seen what is ballistics ballistics is a science of motion which deals with the motion of projectiles and then we have seen the classification of uh, ballistics where we have internal ballistics we have external ballistics we have terminal ballistics and then we have forensic ballistics internal ballistics we have seen it is a movement of the projectile from the point where the trigger of the gun is pulled and then till the bullet leaves the barrel of the gun so if the movement of the cartridge or the bullet within the barrel of the gun is known as internal ballistics and then once the bullet leaves from the muzzle end of the gun till it reaches the target we call it as intermediate ballistics or external ballistics internal ballistics other name is not is proximal ballistics or interior ballistics and then external ballistics or exterior ballistics is from the point of muzzle end and then till the target archon so once the target archon within the projectile is hitting the target archon we and then how it behaves the signs which deal with the behavior of the projectile at the target archon is known as terminal ballistics and uh, we have a subset called wound ballistics where how it is going to produce the wound uh, if the if the person if the if the target object is either human or animal and then we have forensic ballistics where we will apply this knowledge uh, for uh, criminal and uh, civil purposes and then we have seen also the classification of firearms where Firearms are classified according to different types, according to the uh, rifling, according to the manufacturing, according to the uh, usage, according to the velocity of the projectile we have seen. And then most commonly we have seen according to the barrel rifling. It is of two types. One is rifled firearm and then another is smoothbore firearms. Rifled firearms we have seen where there is rifling inside the barrel of the gun and then this rifling is produced by the rifling broch where it will produce grooves and lands and then grooves are the depressor portions and then lands are the elevated portions and the distance between the two lands we call it as a caliber or we call it as a bore in in, uh, in case of uh, rifled forearm we call it as a caliber Whereas in case of a smooth bore firearm, we call it as a bore, B O R E bore. Um, so these are the, some of the silent features. And then uh, we also uh, learned about markings, primary and secondary markings on the bullet. And I have told you uh, what is the fingerprint of the gun is the secondary markings. The primary markings 
are nothing but the markings that are present on the bullet by the riflings present inside the gun barrel so as the bullet moves inside the barrel so it will take some of the features of the rifling and then these features of greases or any linear marks are transferred onto the projectile and then we can know from which gun it has been fired and then second one is the secondary markings where the minute details uh, of the gun can be transferred uh, onto the projectile or the bullet and then we can know the individual gun so the primary markings we can know the manufacturer of the gun so a manufacturer guns like less we can say based on the bullet whether it is fired from the pistol or it is fired from the revolver or it is fired from the rifled uh, firearm we can know it but by looking at the secondary markings we can know from which firearm it has been fired from which pistol it has been fired from which revolver it has been fired so the fingerprint of the gun is based on the uh, secondary markings of the thing so these are the some of the silent features uh, we have gone through in the previous class and now we will go to the next uh, topic so all these things we have seen and just skip it up so these are some of the uh, parts you have to remember you have to remember uh, the sear you have to firing pin and then primer what is a primer i told you primer is a thing which is a part of the uh, projectile or a bullet or a cartridge where the firing pin will hit the primer to produce a spark so that it will ignite the um, gunpowder and then we have the breech end and the muzzle end the muzzle end is the tip tip of the gun barrel is called the front tip end of the barrel is known as the muzzle end and then we have the breech end where we can broke it open so that we can load some of the uh, cartridges there so these are the things we have seen yesterday and then most important thing for the uh, firearm is rifling and rifling it will induces what are the features of rifling means hmm. uh, you can see here it will cause rotation it will cause rotation of the revolutions of the uh, bullet and mostly there will be about 3000 revolutions per second uh, these revolutions will they will increase the penetrating power of the bullet and then it will cause the stability of the bullet and then it will increase the velocity of the bullet so the bullet can reach far the bullet can stay stable and then the bullet can cause more damage at the target as well. So lands and grooves normally about 2 to 20 will be there. So the distance between two lands is known as a bore diameter in case of smooth bore firearm, whereas in case of rifle firearm, we call it as a, a caliber. So primary uh, marking and then one more into we have learned is obturation. Obturation is a thing where when there is a perfect sealing of the gases inside the barrel then the velocity of the bullet will be increased it means the velocity up to the mark will be increased if there is a perfect sealing of gases that is pushing the bullet forward uh, in the barrel is perfectly sealed you can see in the uh, a and b uh, from as the bullet moves from the breech end to the muzzle end b stands for breech end m e stands for muzzle end and then you can see there is perfect abstraction there is no gases leak in case of a where i guess of in case of b you can see the gas are leaking on either side of the bullet so the pressure causing the bullet to move forward is less so the velocity of the bullet will be decreased and then it will not reach the target or it will have a very less distance of firing you can see here in case of smooth bore firearms where the pellets are used instead of bullets here also we need a perfect obturation, perfect sealing so that the gases can push uh, the pellets forward and then here you can see we use VAD with the name of the obstruction we use in smooth bore firearm is called as VAD. So all these things are new terms uh, and so in firearm injuries 
most of the terms are very new. Yeah, you have to know what is a cartridge, what is a bullet, what is a primer, trigger, hammer, firing pin, wad. So all these things are new, and uh, you have you, you should be accustomed to these new terms because in previous uh, classes or even in previous years, uh, these terms are not at all uh, we have seen even in. Uh, uh, in, in our exams or whatever in uh, first year or second even second year in, in any year so these terms are not at all uh, there in any of the medicine so these things uh, are new for a medical student so you have to be acquired about these new terminologies like VAD, uh, primer and all these things so we have seen what is the primary markings and what is the secondary markings primary markings are produced by the rifling that is present inside the gun barrel and then secondary markings are produced by the individual uh, marks either it can be produced by specific uh, details that are done by in the by the manufacturer or it can be due to wear and tear of the gun barrel or it can be due to cleaning some metals can be staying inside the gun barrel and then this metal can cause some scratches on the bullet that is so causing the individual variations of the each uh, gun. So next, uh, from here we'll start uh, today's class. Caliber or gauge, we call it as a gauge, a caliber of the board. The same thing which I have discussed, it is the internal diameter of the rifled firearm. Whereas in case of a smooth bore firearm, we call it as a bore, we worry bore. So we have given two names for uh, each, each individual guns. When it is a rifled firearm, we name it as a caliber or gauge. Whereas in case of smooth bore firearm, we call it as a uh, bore. So it is measured between two opposite uh, lines. And then what is rifling diameter? Rifling diameter is the distance between two opposite groups. Whereas caliber or gauge is the distance between two opposite lines. So measured either in caliber units. So we call it as caliber units. One caliber is equal to 1 by 100th inch so one caliber is equal to 1 and so the guns are measured in caliber units so examples of the rifle firearms are one is revolver normally we will all see these uh, firearms in movies so revolver where you can see there is a rotation this is a rifle firearm that has a cylinder containing multiple chambers usually six uh, where cartridges are placed uh, for firing and then one more example of rifled firearms is pistol pistol is again hand arm which uses cartridges in a vertical magazine placed within the butt so we have the magazine where we have a multiple horizontally placed uh, cartridges or bullets and then we will insert this magazine in the butt or in the handle or in the stock of the uh, gun and then each one it will automatically when the gun is fired it will again reload itself by this so you can see this is the revolver containing revolver is a rifled firearm rifled firearm means where there is rifling inside the barrel where there is rifling means there is lands and grooves so we have to remember that so uh, any rifled firearm means Remember that there is rifling inside the barrel of the gun. So revolver is a rifled firearm and it contains a cylinder in which it has a three, six to eight chambers and then uh, we will insert the bullets with cartridges. So this is uh, again the revolver. There are the same uh, parts which we have remembered in the previous uh, slides the barrel, the cylinder, the muzzle end, and then the trigger, the trigger guard. Here we have the ejector, you know, ejector once uh, a revolver is fired, the bullet moves, but the shell, which we call it as cartridge, it remains there. So in order to get out of the shell, we will pull this ejector out. So whenever, if you pull this ejector out, the remnant part or the shell part of the bullet or cartridge part of the bullet will be ejected 
and then we have the trigger guard we have the hammer and then we have the sight so this is the sight where you can aim at the target so this is the pistol uh, you can see here so this is the magazine that is present you can see here we have horizontal um, bullets with cartridges and then when we when we insert this into the butt so each one it will be automatically take and then uh, it will fire the gun so this is the magazine this is the internal view of the uh, pistol you can see when the inserted magazine you can see the bullets are placed uh, here one thing is the entire thing we, co we, we cannot call it as a bullet so only the, the terminal parts are known as the bullets you can see here in this case you can see the terminal which are much more uh, having a orange color is what moves and rest of the thing it will stay here only you can see here so whenever it is inserted it will go in here and then whenever we pull the trigger it will cause the sear to dislodge thereby the hammer will strike with the firing pin at the primer and then at the primer of the base of the cartridge and then it will cause it will produce a spark and this spark will ignite the gunpowder that is present in the cartridge and then it will produce a lot of amount of gases a huge amount of gases and then these gases will push the bullet here you can see this is the bullet so the bullet is here the cartridge is here and then the gases are here you can see the entire thing before firing is looks like this and then once the firing pin hits the primer producing a spark igniting the gunpowder and we, because of igniting of the gunpowder it will produce a lot of gases and these gases will push the bullet forward with high velocity so this is the mechanism of firing and then this is a mechanism and then recoil spring will occur where uh, this uh, empty cartridge will be ejected out uh, there will be automatic ejection will be there where it will be ejected out and then it will fall near the firing uh, person rifle a rifled firearm what is a rifle a rifle arm is a firearm with a long barrel the bore of which is rifled so we know that rifled firearms are nothing but where there is rifling inside the barrel in this the rifle normally these rifles are used by policemen you might be have seen people who are guarding the banks guarding the banks at the gate with a long gun with a long gun and then they will be standing and then even the policemen will be having this uh, long gun with a long barrel so that is known as rifle so rifle is a long, having is a firearm with a long barrel and then bore of which is rifle and then it is a very powerful weapon even the security persons uh, who are managing the transactions of money uh, atms uh, these rifled firearms are given and then uh, muzzle velocity of this rifled firearm is about 450 to 500 meters per second and the pressure in the firing chamber is about 20 tons per square inches means after firing uh, the pressure generated uh, will be about 20 tons per square inches and then when the rifle firearm is fired it, the bullet can reach between 1000 to 3000 meters so it has a muzzle velocity of about 450 i told you what is muzzle velocity muzzle velocity is the speed at which the projectile leaves the muzzle end of the gun or the muzzle end of the bullet or the muzzle sorry the muzzle end of the barrel of the gun and then pressure in firing chamber is about 20 tons and then range is about 1000 to 3000 meters so this is the rifle you can see here you, normally you will be seeing with the police if there is a wooden stock and then there is a long barrel there is a long barrel normally 
they will uh, broken open here at the breach end and then they will insert two cartridges and then they will fire so this is uh, the rifle firearm you can see a long wood, uh, wooden stock with a long barrel and then this is the muzzle end this is the magazine here the magazine inserted here sometimes even sometimes it can be broken open and then it will be inserted mostly it is seen in smooth bore firearms now you can see side you can see trigger so all these things uh, normally seen but this is how a rifle uh, so the name of this gun is rifle because of the rifling that is present inside the barrel and then what is carbine so carbine is a shortened version of rifle having a short barrel and then firing the same ammunition at the lower velocity usually especially by mounted troops who are, who are mounted troops mounted troops are nothing but the troops which are uh, guarding the country uh, on horses mounted troops means uh, the people who are guarding this uh, people on horses mostly they will be seen on the border security uh, where on the mountain areas or on the uh, very cold places they will be mounting on the horse and then they will be patrolling the uh, area so they are known as mounted troops so they should be carrying they cannot carry a long barrel they cannot carry a long rifle firearm uh, so they have reduced the, the shortened version of the uh, firearm is known as carbon and these are the people who use uh, this carbon so the barrel size is less than length is about less than 55 centimeters and the muzzle uh, velocity is about 600 meters per second and then the range is about 300 meters only whereas in case of rifled firearm it is about 1000 to 3000 meters because the barrel length will increase so it will cause more uh, distance to travel so this is the carbine you can see the shortened form of the rifle so the barrel uh, length has been reduced and then even you can see the uh, wooden stock has also been reduced. Gyro jets are other uh, unique form. So they are firing small rockets uh, rather than inert bullets. They have little recoil and did not require a heavy barrel to resist the pressure of the uh, combustion gases. So velocity on leaving the tube is very low here, uh, but increased to around about 1250 feet per second at 30 feet and then the result was a very lightweight weapon with excellent ballistics now they are out of production we are not uh, uh, producing them and the fuel is kept at the base of the projectile which keeps burning during its flight because of this the entrance wound shows a singeing effect even at a very large distances so this is the garage here uh, we have to remember as we fire fire the bullet it will leave a trailing mark where the base will be keep firing and then we can know at which target it has hit so nowadays it has been not uh, produced next one is smooth bore firearms all these things are uh, rifle firearms so what we have discussed about rifle carbine gyrozet so all these things are rifle firearms pistols and then revolvers all these are rifle firearms. Now, what are the smooth bore firearms? Smooth bore firearms, as the name suggests, the barrel of the gun is smooth. There is no rifling inside the barrel of the gun. So it is one whose barrel is smooth inside from inside. It fires multiple pellets instead of single bullet. Very, very important. So in rifle firearm, we will fire bullets, whereas in case of smooth bore, smooth bore firearm. We fire pellets and then the pellets do not rotate on their axis as does the bullet. So pellets are nothing but small rounded uh, structures it can be of lead or uh, of any material. So mostly lead are used. So they will not rotate because they are rounded structures. So and then the smooth bore firearm examples are shotgun, musket gun, which is of less leather less accurate and has less uh, range than the rifle firearm so between the rifle firearms and smooth bore firearms rifle firearms are more powerful they are more lethal than the smooth bore firearms 
it is used to shoot small moving targets such as birds hair etc which change their direction unpredictably so mostly when you want to shoot a group of birds which are flying or a group of animals like hare or rabbits which are flying and then we use this smooth bore firearm which has the multiple pellets and the range will be more so that uh, the individual pellet uh, the chances that the individual pellet will hit the uh, target will be more because there are num n number of uh, pellets that are being used so multiple pellets ensure that at least one pellet hits the moving target so bore what is a bore as we suggest uh, in case of rifle firearms it is the caliber or gauge which is the distance between two lands whereas in case of smooth bore of smooth bore firearm we call it as a bore bore is the internal diameter of the smooth bore firearm what is caliber to a rifled firearm is a bore to the smooth bore firearm so traditionally it is nothing but the diameter of the uh, 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 barrel the diameter of the barrel particularly the internal diameter of the barrel in case of smooth bore firearm is known as a bore whereas the internal diameter of the barrel in case of rifled firearm is known as caliber or gas traditionally it is not expressed in inches or mm but it is very different way the bore so the bore is defined as the number of equal sized spherical balls made from one pound this definition is important the number of equal sized spherical balls made from one pound one pound means 454 grams of lead each of which exactly fits the inside of the barrel so it, this definition is very important what is the definition of the bore bore is defined as the number of equal sized spherical balls made from 1 pound which is 454 grams of lead each of which exactly fits the inside of the barrel so very very important so thus a 12 bore gun is one which diameter is that of a ball of a lead of size that 12 such balls would be made from 454 grams of the lead so if you want to name the gun as 12 bore gun what it means means 12 bore guns means 12 equal size lead balls are made from 1 1 pound or about 454 grams of the lead so 12 bore gun means is one whose diameter is that of a ball of a lead of such a size that 12 such balls could be made from 454 grams of the lead so that is the meaning so 12 bore guns means we can make only 12 lead balls from 454 grams suppose if i tell about 18 bore gun 18 bore gun means we can make 18 spherical equal size spherical balls from 450 grams of lead or 1 pound of lead suppose if i tell about 30 30 bore gun means 30 small spherical equal size spherical balls can be made from 450 grams of lead so that's how we name the bore size of the gun so the smaller the bore the larger uh, the diameter so if i say eight uh, two bore gun means for 450 grams only two spherical balls equal size spherical balls are so the bore diameter will be high if i say about 20 then the bore diameter will be less so the smaller the bore the larger the diameter of the bore so the 20 bore gun has a smaller diameter than that the fifth 12 bore gun so this is the diagrammatic representation you can see here so this is a 12 gauge barrel or 12 bore uh, thing you can see here there is one pound of uh, lead which is nothing but 450 grams so this 450 grams 12 bore means we have to make 12 equal sized spherical lead balls from this 450 grams in which each will fit equally into the barrel of the gun so that is known as 12 bore barrel so this is the shotgun and you can see this is the cut section of the barrel 
and you can see equal spherical shape to size of diameter so you can see 0.729 inches diameter is there so this is 12 gauze uh, barrel we say suppose if it is a 20 gauze barrel so we can see one pound of lead is taken which is about 450 grams and then 20 such equal size spherical lead balls are made in which each spiral each spiral or um, spear will be fitting uh, the barrel of the gun so this is known as 20 gauze barrel so 20 gauze barrel where the spherical balls will be fitting each spherical balls will be fitting uh, in the barrel so this is one such thing so bore is very important bore is nothing but where we will measure each bore based on the size of where one pound of lead is taken and then we will how to we will make it into equal size spherical balls and then each one will have to fit the barrel of the gun so 12 gauze barrel means 12 such lead balls can be made from one pound or 450 grams of lead and each spherical ball will fit into the barrel of the gun whereas 20 gauze barrel means where 20 such spherical balls can be produced from one pound of or 450 grams of lead so this is as the bore size increases the bore diameter also will decrease you can see 10 gauze <coughs> bore is such that bore only 10 such spherical balls are produced so the size of the bore will be high suppose if it is 410 bore where there are so much of uh, 410 spherical balls has to be produced uh in which each spherical ball will fit into the barrel of the gun so the, the lesser the gas size the more the diameter so 10 gas bore 12 gas 6 gas and then 20 gas 28 gas and 410 gas. so these are the different bores of the shotgun so what are the examples of this smooth bore firearm so one is shotgun otherwise called as scatter gun otherwise called as pepper gun so is a firearm that fires several spherical pellets i told you pellets otherwise known as shots simultaneously so all these things are known as pellets you can see here these each spherical ball is known as a pellet or a shot so we use on the shoulder arm or sometimes the barrels like rifles may they may be a single barrel or double barrel and the barrels may lie side by side and one of the other so these are the shotguns where the two uh, barrels will be by the two sides or it can be on one above the other it can be by the uh, side by side or one other above the other you can see here this is a smooth bore firearm where there will be no rifling and then you can see the barrel one side here and then the other side will be the other so it will be two sided which are side by side barrels will be there you can see here this is the breech end of the uh, gun where it will be broken open and then we will insert the cartridges in the these two holes and then we will have two shots and again after finishing these two shots again you have to open it and then uh, remove the cartridges and then reload uh, with the new cartridges so that you can again uh, shot them so length of length will vary from 18 to 36 inches and then the range is about 30 to 40 meters and then the muzzle velocity about 300 meters so base between the rifle firearms and smoothbore firearms rifle firearms are more uh, effective and then lethal so rifle firearms range is about 1000 to 3000 so very high and then the bore diameter as we have discussed it ranges from 4 to 40 uh, insertion of cartridges shotgun is made to break or open on the hinge for insertion and extraction of cartridge cases and the loading can be done in two ways so just as in the rifles uh, muzzle loading shotguns are commoner than the muzzle loading rifles so mostly uh, we have you can see here this is the breech and loading guns but sometimes the smooth bore firearms are such a way where the muzzle ending loadings can also be there where from the tip we can load uh, the gun powder each material can be fitted into them and then 
we can load it so next one is choking what is choking if the this is has been asked many times in the examination as two marks question so what is a choke if the entire barrel from the bridge end to the muzzle end is of the same diameter it is called as cylinder bore or unchoked gun or true cylinder so if the entire barrel from the breech end to the muzzle end is of the same diameter it is called as a cylinder bore or true cylinder or unchoked gun if the gun if the shotgun has a cylinder barrel and the individual pellets tend to scatter decreasing the probability that the target will be hit to keep the pellets together the terminal 7 to 10 cm of the barrel is constricted this constriction is referred to as a choke you can see here this is the barrel so this is the barrel you can see here there is no constriction this is known as unchoked gun where the diameter will be the same from the beginning to the end whereas here in b and c you can see here there is a terminal constriction of the barrel is there where the terminal diameter of the barrel has been constricted terminal 7 to 10 cm of the barrel is constricted in order to decrease the scattering of the pellets to a wider area so in order to constrict the range so this choking has been done so this type of decreasing the diameter of the barrel terminal 7 to 10 cm is known as choking this is known as choking so there are different types of uh, choking there can be a standard choke you can see here there is decrease the diameter and then there is a cone shaped choke you can see where there is a gradual decrease and then there is cone choke uh, different uh, methods and types have been used in, to decrease the barrel size the terminal 7 to 10 cm of the barrel size so musket is again one more uh, smooth bore firearm uh, designed for use in infantry infantry means uh, by the military person so a soldier armed with a musket is known as a musketeer and then it is a shoulder arm uh, firearm and then the muzzle velocity is about 600 meters per second so this is the musket so it is it also has a long very long barrel so these are the different types of uh, uh, barrel size you can see this is the lower one is the rifled firearm you can see the inside of the barrel is there is a rifling the second one is the smooth bore firearm you can see the inside of the barrel there is smooth there is no rifling and then this is the revolver again this is a rifled firearm so you can see inside there is a right thing so air guns uh, are nothing but these are the it fires projectiles by means of uh, compressed air or other gases mostly co2 uh, in contrast to the firearms which fires uh, propellant so mostly propellant means gunpowder so air guns use air whereas normal other guns like pistols or revolvers or fire rifle firearms will use gunpowder where uh, it will propel the um, bullet forward the air gun can be a rifle air rifle or air pistol or smooth bore firearms can be there so most air guns use metallic projectiles such as ammunition air guns that only use plastic projectile are classified as air soft guns it is not really a separate class of firearms so mostly these air guns are uh, are used uh, in order to disperse uh, the mobs so here the velocity the muzzle velocity is about 80 to 105 the range is about 30 meters very low and then you can see if the person is hit by this there will not be any exit wound there will be entry wound there can be a minor injuries can be produced death can occur from injuries to the head heart and abdomen and uh, there will not be much because the force is very less uh, there will not be any exit wound so this is the uh, wound and this is the you can see muzzle loading smooth bore firearm so where uh, the the gun powder the wad the pellets are all are loaded from the muzzle end of the gun 
so this is the, the liver action uh, anyway we have seen all these things the trigger the carrier and then you can see this is you can see these are cartridges and the, the red parts are known as the bullet so we have the primer here and then all these cartridges contains the gunpowder and then we have the bullet here so once it is dislodged you know it is automatically is refilled here and then the firing pin will hit the base of the primer causing spark and then it will ignite the gunpowder that is present in the cartridge thereby releasing lot of gases and then it will push the bullet forward so these are the some of the revolvers this is the pistol this is one more type so this is the ak47 so this is one case which i have done uh, so this is it involves both uh, this is a 302 case a murder case um, from political rivalry which i want to uh, i do not want to name uh, so this person has been uh, killed by both knives by stabbing and also by using a firearm so you can see there are multiple stab wound injuries are there on the neck and then on the chest and here also you can see here unstabbed here you can observe here there is a tattooing mark tattooing mark is there and then there is central hole so this is a firearm injury this is a firearm injury of intermediate range we can know from which distance the person has been uh, um, fired so mostly it is about three to six meters distance the fire firing has been done and then this causes this kind of tattooing so surrounding tattooing is nothing but the gunpowder has been sticking to the dermis you know each gunpowder also some whenever uh, there is unburnt gunpowder it will also travel along with the bullet and then it will stick to the uh, it will go through the dermis, uh, epidermis and then stick onto the dermis thereby it looked like as if it is tattooing so you can see here so there is surrounding tattooing and then then there is a central injury so you can see here the bullet so it has been fired from back side and then it has not able to reach the exit wound so there is an entry wound but it could not able to uh, go out of the body so only entry wound there is no exit wound this is these wounds two wounds are nothing but the stab wounds so that is a, a firearm uh, bullet that has been recovered so here this is the base of the cartridge bullet here we, there will be primer whenever the firing pin hits here it will produce a spark and then it will ignite uh, the gunpowder which is present in the cartridge and then the bullet will move forward so here you can see uh, the entry wound the entry wound at the chest cavity you can see this is the inside of the chest cavity uh, you can see the 12th or 11th to 12th ribs 10th rib has been fractured and then it has uh, entered the body so this is again the diaphragm the diaphragm has been injured the pain trading injury is there and then even you can see the stomach this is stomach wall the stomach wall has been injured this is through and through injury of the stomach and then even the lung has been injured so the left side the lung has been injured so the person has been fired from the back side and then it has injured the chest wall it has injured the diaphragm it has injured the stomach and then it has injured the uh, lung also so this has been this is the injury uh, um, weapon that has been used um, we call it as tapachi uh, this weapon name is tapachi so it is a very old one so uh, this weapon has been used uh, in the firing of this so that's all for today so thank you very much for joining uh, we will meet you in the next class thank you very much if you have any doubts you can ask me uh, if you have any clarification you can uh, type uh, i will stay for a, a few minutes and then i will close if you have any doubts uh, please ask for clarification
well if there are no doubts uh, we'll close uh, thank you for joining uh, we'll meet in the next class thank you